Hey everyone, Fear Crawler here. Welcome to the video. It's a bit of a sad day for Mini Crawler and I. We were just about to bury the family cat here. But our cat's not dead. No, but he will be if he doesn't stop peeing in my office. Anyway, today's video deals with grave diggers, and it's one we both hope you will enjoy. From the Journal of Willard Hurst, Watchman of Darkwood Cemetery, August 27th. I sit at my desk in my new house, on the grounds of the graveyard. I've been busy all day. Hal Johnson, the senior watchman, took me around and showed me where the embalming house, storage shed, and water pump was. After the tour, he gave me a set of skeleton keys to all the buildings, mausoleums, the gates, and the crypt. I asked why we need to live on the grounds. He laughed and told me that since we work either from dawn to dusk or dusk till dawn, it seemed more sensible to have us just walk to our houses instead of risking public safety by falling asleep while driving home. This sounds believable, but there seems to be something off about this. As we reach my new home, I ask him about the pistol on his hip. He looked down at it and said in his thick drawl, Oh, don't you worry about that, youngin. This here's to scare off anyone who breaks in after hours. Grave robbers and the like. Again, I felt a little doubt about this coming from this man, but I decided not to worry about it. I finally have a place to stay where I won't have to worry about some man-hating landlady complaining about my girly magazine collection. September 12th. So far this new job has been coming along pretty well. The work is easy enough, I just help with the grave digging, fill the graves after funerals, and make sure the wire on top of the gate is secure. Hal says it's to keep out intruders. Apparently a few years back, some punk broke in and tried to rape a girl who had snuck in to put flowers on her dead boyfriend's grave. Hal heard the commotion and shot the punk in the chest before he could do any serious harm. He wasn't given a burial like most people. The attempted rapist was thrown into the crypt to rot and decay, being eaten by rats and maggots. I asked about that and Hal explained that the mayor had cleared it because the girl who was assaulted was his daughter. I sometimes wonder if that's the reason Hal always smells like a combination of bourbon and weed. Does it haunt him that he killed someone? I haven't had the chance to ask him since he guards the cemetery at night and I guard it during the day. September 17th. Today was certainly different. I was cleaning bird crap off Thomas Sloan's tombstone, some rich old geezer who died about two years ago, when I met the third member of the cemetery crew, Gall. Gaul stands about six foot nine, has a reddish brown beard, pointed like a devil's. Long, lanky, greasy hair that hangs about his face and locks, and ice blue eyes. In addition, Gaul had a large number of scars and tattoos. Most notable amongst his many scars on his overly muscular frame is a large scar in his throat, which, according to Hal, is the result of a car accident when he was a young man, and it also rendered him mute. I feel very scared whenever this giant is around, and the fact he carries a hatchet doesn't help, and I have a bad feeling that those scars aren't from a car accident. September 28th. Now I know why Gaul is all scarred up, why we live in the graveyard, why Hal carries a gun with him at all times, why Gaul carries his hatchet, and why the wall surrounding this place has razor wire on it. Last night, I woke up and could not get back to sleep, so putting on my clothes, I decided to go for a walk. Perhaps I would bump into Hal and Gaul, hopefully together as Gaul still scared me senseless, and could join them in patrolling the cemetery. I walked down the path near where Michael Nightstone's ashes were buried. Apparently he was some rich British guy, with a freakishly deformed son who was cremated and buried with him. Suddenly. I saw Gaul walk out from behind a grave with his hatchet. He looked over at me and seemed surprised that I was out at night. He gestured to me making a come here signal. I decided to obey the giant with the axe and walked over to him. Before I could ask what he wanted, we heard Hal shout in the distance. Faster than I could move, Gaul placed his hatchet in the holster on his leg and bolted in the direction of Hal's scream, making a gesture for me to follow. As scared as I was of Gaul, 
I decided to help him find Hal and make sure he was okay. We reached Hal about five minutes later. I had to really struggle to keep up with the giant and we saw he had rolled his ankle by one of the crypts and now it looked pretty swollen. Gaul heaved him up and supported him with his elbow as Hal is way too short to reach Gaul's shoulders. As we were about to turn and head back to Hal's house to put some ice on his ankle, a sound like an iron bell having a sledgehammer crash into it rang from behind us. We turned, and I saw something that will haunt me if I live to be a hundred and four. Standing in front of the broken gate to the crypt was a man about twenty-three in a ratty leatherman's jacket. He had milky eyes like a blind person, large spots of missing hair, rips and tears on his clothing and his skin. Oh dear God, his freaking skin. His skin was yellow, gray and green. It was slimy and pus filled and full of holes. The most notable one being in his chest. I heard Hal shout, You should have stayed dead, scumbag. I kill you once, I kill you again. He hopped forward and fired his gun into the man's chest and neck. But since he had to hop to keep from falling over, he couldn't land one in the skull. Suddenly, he fell over, and the creature shambled to him and began to lean down. When suddenly, almost so fast that I didn't see it, Gaul pulled his axe out of its holster and threw it at the creature like a tomahawk striking it in the chest, resulting in it falling over. Gaul sprinted over to the creature and ripped the axe from its chest and proceeded to hack the thing's body, severing its head and limbs from the carcass. The scent was horrible. It reeked worse than anything I had ever smelled. I looked as Gaul began to pick up the pieces and throw them back into the crypt, and I knew who the thing had been. Hal's story came back to my mind, the punk who had tried to rape a girl when Hal shot him to save her. I looked at the now split in half head and remembered what Hal had told me. Scum like that don't need no Christian burial. Day is hell bound anyways. Had been about how Hal worded it in his thick southern drawl. Gaul washed the blood and gore from the grass via a nearby hose. After I finished vomiting, I stood up and walked with Gaul and Hal back to Hal's place. Well, did you dig that one? Did you? You used that joke in the date video. Shut up! Like I can afford writers. Well, until next time, everybody take care, be safe, and above all, stay, stay scared. scared.